Now, you remember the guys in Las Vegas, the couple that went in and shot two cops, one uh, in the back of the head when he wasn't looking, and then shot a person who was at Walmart, who was just a regular civilian. They thought they were going to start a right-wing revolution, and uh, they were anti-government, anti-law enforcement. Uh, they laid down uh, the flag that says, do not tread on me. They were, of course, uh, white supremacists as well. It doesn't get any more right-wing than that, unless, of course, you're talking to the right wing. Now there's two facets to this story. First of all, Fox News. It, the shooting happens on Sunday. By Monday, gone. Whitewashed or, or maybe rightwashed right out of existence. Uh, News Corps uh, is a handle on Daily Coast and wrote a really interesting article about this. Uh, bothered to actually watch Fox News the day after and the day after that to see what happened. After only one day, Fox News has already eliminated coverage of the Tea Party cop killers in Las Vegas who went on a murderous rampage Sunday. On Monday, Fox's primetime programs, Bill O'Reilly, Megyn Kelly, and Sean Hannity were silent on the subject, except for four sentences on Kelly's show. What right-wing uh, gun nuts uh, who went on a shooting spree and killed all those innocent people? I don't know what you're talking about. Four sentences in prime time, that'll do it. On Tuesday's morning's edition of Fox and Friends, the curvy couch potatoes, <laughs> that's awesome, uh, kind of alliteration, but nice phrasing anyway you slice it, the curvy couch potatoes failed to mention uh, Jared Miller and his wife Amanda. Later on happening now, Fox ignored the story entirely. Outnumbered also declined to report on the Millers, despite having guest co-host Dr. Keith Ablau who has psychoanalyzed every criminal politician and other public figure in this century without ever examining or even meeting any of them. I like that snipe at Keith Ablau as well. See, I wonder why Fox News doesn't want to talk about it. They were anti-government. Hmm, who keeps bringing on guests who say, oh, the government's bad and maybe you should even do an uprising, maybe you should even do a secession. These are all Fox News guests that have come on repeatedly, including, of course, Clive Bundy on Hannity's program, night in, night out, night out talking about how terrible the government is, how terrible law enforcement is. There are also white Christians and fundamentalists at that. Oh, okay, well, no, 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 that would offend our audience. And on top of that, they were gun enthusiasts, huge Second Amendment supporters. Gee, I wonder why Fox News doesn't want to talk about that, okay? And by the way, uh, the same fo uh, Fox News that says at every turn when it's a uh, Muslim, why won't Obama call it terrorism? Why won't he call it terrorism? Has Fox News called this act of shooting civilians and cops, including in the back of the head, on an ideological rampage which they clearly outlined, has, have they called it terrorism yet? I'm still waiting. Oh no, not yet, that's weird. Okay, then we go to an even more ridiculous proposition. It's uh, brought to you by Cliff Kincaid. He runs Accuracy in Media Center for Investigative uh, Journalism. Now, that's hilarious because he's right wing. I've seen his stuff before. He wants the exact opposite of accuracy in the media, right? And you're about to see in this particular case. He says, the reference to the Gadsden flag, that's the don't tread on me, being the Tea Party's favorite was an obvious effort to link the Tea Party to the murders. The flag dates back to the American Revolution and is used by various groups and people to protest big government. Now, um, I said on this program, it doesn't mean that all Tea Party people agree with that. In fact, the great overwhelming majority, of course, wouldn't do this and of course don't agree with it, right? But it is a symbol that is largely used by the Tea Party. It doesn't make the Tea Party responsible, but these guys are clearly right wing. They agree with the same ideology. Doesn't mean that if you agree with that ideology, you would do the same thing as them, but they're in that camp, okay? No, not according to Cliff Kincaid. He says they are, quote, progressives. <laughs> Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. How do these guys, literally the most right wing guys I've ever seen, become progressives? Well, they explain. Why do the likes on his Facebook page include so many pro-marijuana groups? Legal dope has been accepted by some libertarians, most notably at the Cato Institute, but it has been a left-wing cause for decades, mostly funded for the last decade or so by the hedge fund operator George Soros. How they connected this back to George Soros? I mean, look, kudos. In my wildest imagination, I couldn't see how you could connect literally the most right-wing radical group I've ever seen in my life to George Soros. Well played. Oh, they see they had a libertarian streak in them, so they sometimes smoke dope. Progressives, George Soros, George Soros. They say that they listen to right-wing stuff, that they like, they, that they say they're right-wing. <laughs> they, they say they hate progressives. 
Nope, nope, Soros. Okay. He explains that, it, that, in fact, you should ignore all of their other ideology that is very well stated. You should only concentrate on the marijuana angle. He says, they are a classic case of a pothead, possibly with paranoid or psychotic tendencies. You see, it's reefer madness. The pot made him do it. Not their hateful right-wing ideology, which they've had all this time, which literally their neighbors would say they would pull us over and tell us how much they hate the government and how right-wing they are and how much they hate law enforcement and how they're gonna start a right-wing revolution, right? No, it was the pot that made them do it. He says, it sounds like marijuana took its psychological toll on him. These right-wingers either trying to ignore it or pretend that these guys are progressives are the most comical, ridiculous people we've ever seen. Thank you. I mean, we don't even have to say anything after this ridiculous. Man, how pathetic.